missed you. Missed you, missed you. Oh, so great to be back, and so happy to have the boys with us again. Uh, we've been on tour now for a couple of months, and uh, we really, if we ever thought we took it for granted, now it's a, we're so grateful to be back, so grateful to have you with us. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Thank you so much for being our beloved gold attendees. And we're gonna bring the guys on right now. Let's have a warm welcome for Jared and Jensen. Jensen Ambrose, Jared Pelligan. Probably close to uh, 
getting in bed with a distributor at this point. So when that happens, <laughs> any distributors out there? Yeah. He's <laughs> missing two hands. So you're not gonna get yeah, five, you know, five, five, six, six, seven. <laughs> so when that happens, they might be more likely to get it uh, in New York. But we'll see. Hopefully soon. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, right here. Yeah, yeah, you. Well, we'll see if you might. Hi. So, uh, recently I was at Rhode Island Comic Con and ran into uh, Jesse Usher and asked him for some info on you. I hear you have a good party trick, Jetson, that you can. He asked, he said I should ask you to chug a beer. Or shotgun a beer. It's a shotgun a beer? Yes. It is New Orleans. All right, bring out the beer. Did, <laughs> wait, Jesse told you that I, I, did, did I shut up here? <laughs> Apparently more than one of his memories. This sounds like me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you grow up in Texas, uh, at some point in time, you do a rite of passage. Yeah, it is sort of a rite of passage. Um, <laughs> but should probably go away once you hit 40, and then clearly hasn't, so, uh, thanks, Jesse. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I did that one, one or twice, once or twice, or maybe even seven times. <laughs> it's fun night in front of Jesse. Yeah, that, that, that whole cast is uh, a lot of fun. They, they, have, they have almost as much fun as we have, um, but not quite. Not quite. Um, yeah, I had a good time. All right. Uh, I'm going to stay on this side. I'm going to go the farthest that way. That's you, yes. <laughs> We're, we're getting right here. Hey, it's so girl. Um, Jen said I went to Acme Oyster Bar last night. It was, turns out I like oysters. Who knew? Did, where'd you go? Acme Oysters down right. in the French Quarter. Charboil, Acme, Acme Oyster House. Some was charboil, charboil oysters? Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Have you ever had sweet potato beignets? It's so good. Sweet potato beignets? It says sweet potato and duck. There's no duck that I could see. Duck Is it like sweet potato and then like... <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. No, but it was... It must be duck fat. I think so. Nah, it's like cooked in duck fat. Go there. It's, it's a mouth gas. Is that also acne? No, it's so boo. So, so boo. So boo. That's so boo. Okay, I have another suggestion for you. Okay. So, last night, uh, um, I went to uh, Tipitina's, which is a... It's an institution here in New Orleans. Uh, it's a music venue place. Um, and <clears throat> went there, uh, saw a little bit of a show, and I was like, oh God, I, gotta, I gotta work tomorrow, I gotta get out of here. But out, just outside the door, right across the street, the median of, of the road there, um, was a, uh, a guy with a big giant smoker who makes his own sausage and cooks them right there on this, uh, I don't know how old the grill was, and my friend who, uh, uh, who lives here in New Orleans is like, you've got to try this. I'm like, I'm not, it's street food. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and I just had dinner. Like, I like, he's like, y you need, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not taking you home unless you have one. I'm like, fine. One, it was a religious experience. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, it was like. What time, what time was this? One this morning. Listen, my wife's here, and I, I, I don't, I don't do well with a curfew when she's around. It's just she's kind of in charge, so that's what happens. Um, but I'm glad that this happened because it was phenomenal. So if you, have, if you find yourself at Tipitina's any any night in the near future, look for this for this fellow making his own sausage. Oh. Well, she said she's gonna tell my cousin's son that he's gonna have a new girlfriend, so she can have all the food down here. Well, there you go. <laughs> Any excuse is a good one. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's go in the back there. Okay, yeah, you're pointing to somebody else, which I like that method. That's nice. Um, Supernatural tends to give us, like, flawed parents who are also heroic. And I'm wondering, now that Sam's a dad, what do you think his strengths and weaknesses are as a movie? <laughs> Sorry, what? I, 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 I saw half that. Now that Sam's a dad on the show, what do you think his strengths and weaknesses would be as a parent, since Supernatural's parents tend to be flawed people? Got it. 
I, I still can catch up. Um, now that Sam is a father, yes. What are what do you think Sam's strengths and weaknesses are since uh, parents are supernatural to the big flawed? Oh, I see. Uh, well, we all know how Sam is flawed. Uh, Sam's dead now. He's a father. So, uh, his strengths very flawed. He's, he's now. Uh, so I, I think. Uh, what an absent father you are. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I feel like, I hope that Sam, I, I figured and thought that Sam would have tried to take the best of all of these wonderful characters, his brother most of all, that he learned throughout the years, uh, and been really supportive and, and patient and kind father, but I'm sure he still has demons, I'm sure he still didn't sleep too well, and he probably told Dean Jr. to, to read too many books, um, so that, uh, he didn't kind of take out the Sam. And gave him a 45 to keep the 45. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks for the night. But thank you. That's me. Uh, right there. Another point, a pointing and a pointer. And a pointed at. Uh, behind yeah. you. That's the new method, guys. Uh, behind you. Behind you. Uh, the other behind you. The one where you face the other direction. Yes, that one. <laughs> Look where you face the other direction. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> Go behind you. The other behind you. The one where you face the other direction. <laughs> oh, that one. That's all I can think of. Got it. <laughs> On camera as well, yes. there's lots of ugly crime. But what I wanted to ask is, um, whatever happened to the rich jumpers that went on down to Brazil? What are they doing? I would love to see them on the hunt. The rich jumpers? The rich jumpers? Oh, yeah. The rich jumpers? Oh, the rich characters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the alter ego. Oh, oh, right, the alter ego. Like, 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 we call them Bizarro Sam and Dean. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably somewhere looking at themselves in the mirror. The bizarro <laughs> chesters. Uh, bizarro, the bizarro chesters. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. That was a fun episode. Uh, yeah, that was fun for us too. Okay, good. Because we, we tried to have... Uh, you, you leaned into that one pretty, pretty good. I had to. I had to. I, it was, I knew it was coming and I was like, I'm going to get all the silly nonsense out. It was, you made it difficult for me. Uh, you know, those takes. <laughs> just look over and like, whatever you're doing with your face, I was just like, at least I can, <laughs> what's he doing with his face? At least I can, can. At least I can tip my chair over. And this is true. <laughs> yeah. The bad thing is with that, the tipping of the chair, happened accidentally the first time, and then they were like, yeah, yeah, do, do that every time. And then, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, like, naturally, to, like, stick the chair over. Anyway, um, I don't, I don't know what they're, yeah, they're probably, um, they're probably at some internet cafe. Uh, drinking, yeah. drinking an oat latte. Either that or the real Sam and Dean took care of them before they, uh, went to that bar. No. So, no. no. I want some dude that looks like me in a purple suit. <laughs> The, the pants came up to here. It's like, there's a lot of angles showing. Is this cool? Is this all right? Is this all right? Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the finale. <laughs> yeah, they're shopping at outlet malls right now. That's, that's what they're doing. Um, <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, hey, all right. How about the, the guy who's angry with me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you! <laughs> Alright, no, the other guy that's saying, yeah, come on! That's <laughs> everywhere. Okay. Alright, what are the best tacos? He's like, this whole row hates you, dude. I know you don't have pie at your brewery. Get it together. Best tacos in Texas and why? Oh, oh God. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That's a good question. I mean,. Well, Austin. Yeah, I'm going to say Austin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and not just because we're biased, but it's, that's why we moved there. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, Austin does have the best tacos in Texas. I'm going to go with this place that I would go to every day. On, basically, on, that's hyper. Um, there's a place on O'Connor Road in San Antonio, where I grew up, 
Go O'Connor Road, yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on that one. <laughs> There's a place called Tejas Cafe, and they would have these giant uh, homemade flour tortillas. And I think when I was growing up, it was like 85 cents, and it was like a, it was a giant uh, tortilla with bacon and egg or chorizo and egg or, or uh, potato and egg. And we would go, my brother and I. We were we we grew rapidly in our high school years. <laughs> we were very hungry, and so we would go and get all this salsa. Five or six tacos that are giant, and then it'd be like, "Hey, let's uh, let's go to Schlitterbahn," and then you get to Schlitterbahn and you're in a bathing suit. And you're like, "These tacos ain't sitting too well. I don't know if I trust the bathrooms." Uh, but the, the, the taco Schlitterbahn is a water park. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. For those of you, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Schlitterbahn. What is yeah, it? So, long story short, the moral of my story is: don't have six tacos and go to Schlitterbahn. But you can have six tacos and go for a nap. <laughs> and work. So I, I'm gonna go with the. Uh, just as also, it's as a matter of fact, they when they made beers for us, uh, season one, they asked us to think of funny names or something, something meant to you, meant something to you. Um, and my beer uh, was called Larkler Tejas, and it's because of Tejas Cafe. It's because of the tacos at Tejas Cafe. So yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> O'Connor. Uh, but you want to hear? Stable. You do Taco Deli or Torchies? I mean, there are so many. Yeah, I'm, I'm trustworthy. There are. There's some really good. Uh, yeah, I, I would probably go Taco Deli. Yeah. In Austin. Yeah, Taco Deli's great. It's just, it's so, it's always solid. I would like to go with somebody who's not angry at me. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I see two hands in the back. Uh, there were two hands, they just went down, she got tired. Or were you smelling your armpits? Yes, who with the fingers? Just because it's blurry and I'm like, well, just so we see. Hi guys. Hi. First, I just wanted to say thank y'all because of, because of your show, I met my best friend online. We came here together, so. Awesome. Um, also, Jen said, this is pretty really quick. Did you, it wasn't me, but did you see the shirt with Daniel on it that said the best thing about Jackals was his wife? And how did you feel about it? Um, well, I feel like the framing was a little off uh, because I literally got cut out of the photo. Which... Well done, I suppose. <laughs> it just, it's a nice little, like, accent on the whole shirt. Um, <laughs> it's literally the same thing. My, I think Daniel's better, and I get, I get cut out of the photo. Which, okay, I got it. Thank you. Um, I appreciated it. I appreciated it. And I, I may have mentioned it to her, and she may be coming by this afternoon, so. <laughs> just to see that shirt. So if you don't have it on, put it on. It's on? You have it on? Cool. Looking for you later. <laughs> um, okay, right here. We thought you got called a second ago, but yeah, there you go. Yes. Keep your hand up, keep your hand up. Right, keep, 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 nope, nope, keep coming, keep coming. The other, keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. Stop, uh-uh. It's a family program. Hi. Hi, my name is Summer. Hi, Summer. Um, I asked this question to Jared last night, and he gave a great answer. Whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa. I swear, it's, you gave a great answer. Um, but there's something important that I really wanted to talk about, and uh, and that is talking about why Dean's death was not him giving up, but accepting his point in the story. Why Dean's, why Dean's death was not giving up? Not, because Dean is always known for never giving up and always keep fighting and keep living, and why he didn't take the opportunity to have Sam help him and go to, you know, get an ambulance, and why she didn't like my answer. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you looking for another answer? Is that it? Well, your, your oh, precious <laughs> own. Um, I have I have two thoughts on this. Uh, one is, and this is something that we heavily discussed during the, the filming of. of said scene was <clears throat> that physically and logistically we were playing the fact that it had uh, the rebar had positioned itself in a way that if I was taken off of it then it would be instant death um, so that it was like basically holding holding my lungs together holding my my torso together which if, if you took it took, took me off of that that it would just I, I would be gone in seconds so that's kind of how we had to play that in order for it to make sense. So that, but you know, so that he didn't go and run and get an ambulance or go and get the medic bag and impala and go into triage mode. 
Um, <clears throat> so that's that's how we kind of got answered that question on the day and, and logistically. But more kind of in theory of, of why he didn't struggle so much. I mean, there was like he, he was not he was not happy that he was stuck on a post in the middle of a barn. Uh, and in fact, I think there was a there was uh, something I added there, um, which was just I just yelled. I, don't, I forget what I said, like damn it, or, or, or just like damn it, like that was not scripted. But I just feel like he would have been like I wasn't prepared for this right now. But once it settled in that this is this was happening, I think, and we talked a little bit about this in the meet and greet yesterday, uh, that there, and I think you. you they mentioned that you talked about it too, um, about how much time had elapsed between the God showdown and the barn scene. And I think, I always assumed it was several years had gone by. Um, and so they had been living in this, in basically their, their ideal setting for several years. They're, they beat the big bad, they, they, they saved the world, they saved themselves, they were doing what they love. They were in a routine that made sense. Everything was, they, they found their, their sweet spot. And I feel like that played into Dean's acceptance that he, he had made it, he was okay, because he got to where he needed to go. And he was there and had been living there for a while. And that was, that was what he needed in his life. And he kind of found it. And so I think it was easier for him to say the few things that he needed to say to his brother at the end. I guess Which? I have a dark. Huh? I guess I have a dark sensibility because I was like, it was quick. <laughs> they drove home from God and got killed. They said you said that it was like five years. Five years. You said it was five years. Between what and what? Between the God showdown and the barn scene, that we had been living in that routine for like five years of like That's going on hunts. It's not enough years. Five. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> she's, she's doing the prom way. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if you two lovely gentlemen would mind showing us an elbow? You want to see my weakness? Not strong enough. Uh, I'm sure that means something in like the we probably don't talk world that I don't know. No, it was a Ask DJ. It was DJ. Okay. Oh, DJ's involved? Yeah, definitely not showing up. <laughs> Thank you for the question. I'm gonna find out what that means. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna find out from DJ after I punch him. Uh, okay. Uh, there's like seven hands pointing at one person. In there. It's, okay, there you go. That's it. It's like an octopus. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I just want to like, thank my team over here for 5,000 hands pointing at me. But I have a really serious question. I just want to know what kind of coffee y'all are drinking. Uh, and it's my hair of dog. It's, it's, a, it's a good question. I think it's just a dog that lots of Black coffee. Wait, you don't know what you're drinking? No, I'm not going to say. I, we get, I've been getting the same thing for 13 years, and so I, whenever I ordered it, back in my Chicago con, which is about my soul. Yeah, uh, but it's good. It's just, it's a little bit of sugar. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I've been seeing you right there with the phone. Yeah. This is a Jameson latte? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Gail, uh, I was going to go with it, but uh, you can ask also after the words. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Bill from New Orleans. You're also Gail? Bill. Bill from, from New Orleans. Orleans. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds funny. That's, uh, that's Gail right there. That's, that's like, that's, uh, my wife and I are like huge uh, WWE fans as well. And uh, that episode, uh, Beyond the Mad, when he uh, uh, wrestled or uh, played yeah. with uh, the Miz. How was that? That, uh, that episode for you? He, well, at first he was... He was Lovely. Uh, I had we had a really good time working with him. 
Uh, and then our buddy uh, Alex Pondrick, who, who played, um, I forget the character's name now, but the, 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 other, the other star wrestler that Dean was so excited to see. Um, I mean, that was, that was just one of those episodes and one of those storylines that, that we, we really have fun doing because it's, um, you know, it's a little bit uh, out of the norm when we, you know, we do things like that. So we, we really eat those up. I, I, I liked it. I will and they're say both that, great guys. They're yeah. Big old scary guys. Who, who are just sweet, sweethearts, yeah. Yeah, Ponovic was a heavyweight boxer in Canada right. for many years. And he and Tomo still kick box and train together. Uh, and Paul Lazenby, uh, he was like a mixed martial artist in, in Japan. Like he's been all over the place, uh, even before the UFC started. And they're the scariest guys and the kindest guys you could ever hope to know and call friends. Yeah, I think, it, it, I mean, in my experience, like those those trained fighters, those guys that have like really been in it and, and understand that world tend to be like the most, the, like the sweetest, gentlest souls. Like, it's like they don't have to buff their chest up because they know they can kill you. Um, <laughs> It truly, like, I, I, yeah. I find that more often than not when I meet, like, fighters or trained boxers or something. It's like, they're, they're like, the most, like, calm and cool and collective folks. And, and, uh, and they pull their hair back and they have cauliflower hair. And like, you're, like, not messing with them. <laughs> nope. Respect. Um, yeah, but that was a fun episode. Thanks. Um, are you looking at us, Cliff? Okay. He can't see that far. Man. <laughs> he only sees movement. He doesn't have his glasses on. If you don't move, you won't see. He's <laughs> like <a> Velociraptor. <laughs> 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 Stay still. T Rex. Uh, um, what were you? You thought you were in the hail? Yeah, hail. Yeah, yeah, That's awesome. Look at that, you don't have to run. Oh, sorry. Hi. Yeah. Um, so, my question is, I was curious how you think um, Sam would have reacted on uh, Dean Jr.'s six-month birthday. Oh. <laughs> he didn't leave the room, let's put it that way. I thought I tripped every month. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Sam was very aware uh, of what still goes bump the night, and I think Sam did some stuff in his years behind the scenes, you know? Uh, go take care of stuff that he was concerned about or something that uh, might threaten his family. Um, but you can bet that uh, Dean Jr. slept in the same room as uh, Daddy Sam. And, uh, Jerry, you want to talk about a helicopter parent? <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Totally obnoxious helicopter parent. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go... Gosh, now everybody's pointing at everybody. <laughs> Nobody has a real question. They're just pointing at their friends. That's... <laughs> I'm gonna go right here, uh, Rainbow Mask. I like the beanie. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this open chair next to you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question on my phone. Uh, you have a question on your phone? Yeah, I wrote it down. Yeah, no, just uh, airdrop it to me. That's fine. <laughs> Why is that? So I'm just going to read it. Um, so I guess first. Uh, you okay? Good. Hi. I'm Hi. Uh, so I'm just going to read all of this. Um, so uh, first, thank you, Jared, because uh, you work with AKF and uh, Desigmatizing Mental Health. It's inspirational, honestly, and you and your portrayal of Sam helped me, and I know a lot of other people throughout. Thank you. Um, my question, though, is about the finale. Um, so, it, is, it was established in season five that um, Sam and Dean were both, because uh, they shared a heaven, they were, uh, at least, uh, Ash said that, at least in the episode, that they were soulmates because they shared a heaven. Uh, platonic soulmates, just to make sure to clarify. Um, and I was just wondering, as you, Jared and Jensen, and Sam and Dean, is that something that you kept in mind throughout the rest of the show? That at least knowing in the future that they would be sharing heaven. And is that part of the security they have in the finale after they kind of established their own routine? Yeah. Knowing that after the fact that they would be also sharing a heaven. Because they didn't know that Jack would change it. Sure. And uh, also on top of that, after Dean died with Sam, is that something that he 
ever worried about was going to heaven and knowing that he would I think what you're saying, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I think Sam and Dean, you know, especially after, say, season eight or nine, knew that they were going to be together one way or the other, uh, whether on this planet or the next, and especially when, you know, Jack and Cass came along and wanted to offer their help. Like, like uh, Heaven Bobby said, you know, they had a big hand in heaven and making sure it didn't happen. Um, so I, I do think that, I don't think Sam was worried that he would never see his brother again. That's, I think he, he knew it was going to happen one way or the other. Yeah, I think there was, uh, you probably find that in, in that scene on the bridge. Uh, at the very end, there, you know, Dean wasn't like, Oh my gosh! What? What are you doing here? This is so weird! <laughs> like an episode of the Californians. What are you doing here? What did you take my I will say that thing, I like broke out crying when he sent Sam. Right, and and that was that was always meant to be like that. That that moment was supposed to to be like, yeah, it was, it, it, Dean was supposed to be like, you know, what took you so long? About time, kind of thing. Not. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so I think they knew. They, they knew that, that they, would, they would see each other again. And on that note, we're out of time for oh. this gold panel. I'm sorry. We're not going anywhere. We'll be back. I'll see you later. Thank you all so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.